Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your hands towards heaven. Let's give God glory. Let's thank Him. He's wonderful. Let's thank Him. Let's thank Him. Appreciate Him. He's worthy. He's all and in all. Oh, thank you, Jesus. There's none like you. Oh, raise your voice. Raise your voice. And Peter and John, being let go, they went to their own company and they raised their voice. Raise your voice. They raised their voices unto God. Raise your voice. He opens his hands and gives all living creature that had desire. Raise your voice. Is a prayer answering God. Thank Him. Appreciate Him. I can't tell you everything today, but God is good. God is good. He's not just good, he's wonderful. If we praise him from now till tomorrow, is nothing to stand beside what he has done for us. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 103, verse 1. I want to read from verse 1 to 5. I'm going to read verse 1, you read verse 2. I read verse 3, you read verse 4. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Ready, read. Who forgives all your iniquities and heals all your diseases. Stop. You know the meaning of redemption? To buy back. They loaded you. They drove you to an NPC. God met you on the way and offloaded you. <laughs> Who redeems your life from destruction? Some of us would have been destroyed, but God brought us back. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies? Why will you not bless a God like this? In verse 5, the Bible says, Who satisfies your mouth? With what? Why do you talk against people when you see good things in their lives? So that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Father, we thank you. Let your word come with revelation, with exactitude, and with accuracy. Let nobody remain the same. Thank you, Father. We shut down every network of the enemy. And we declare in the name of Jesus, no power will be able to operate here apart from the power of the Spirit of God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. Give the Lord a hand as you take your seat. <laughs> Love you right back. God bless you. Hallelujah. In Psalm 103, verse 1, the Bible says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, all within me. Have you thought about it? What are the things within you? Your kidneys, your, your liver. You command them to bless the Lord. All that is within me. Bless his holy name. I love verse 2. The Bible says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. There's a phone called Nokia 3310. Very powerful. Very strong. Very loaded. If it falls into water, you just shake it and call with it. It cannot take much pictures. It cannot store much things. The, the only defect in it is that it doesn't have memory. That's the difference between Nokia 3310 and Samsung. No memory. A lot of people don't have good memory what God has done for them. That's why God said, forget not 
his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities. Who heals all your diseases. Did you enjoy the testimony you, you, you watched? Somebody, only God knows what happened. Maybe her kidney packed up. And she engaged kingdom principles. And she went to the hospital and she was healed. Do you know that headache you had last week was not a mere headache? Maybe cancer I wanted to develop. And God healed all you. How can, you, how can somebody be whining you to serve and to praise a God like that? In verse 4, I love verse 4. Who redeems your life from destruction? Who crowns you with loving kindness? God is so loving. A lot of people think, oh, God just used this my sick child to teach me faith. It's a lie. God is loving. Death is an enemy. Sickness is an enemy. In fact, the Bible says the last enemy that will be destroyed is death. All those ones. God does not have evil. He can't tempt you with evil. All that God has is loving kindness and tender mercies. Every morning his mercies are new. The Bible says in verse 5, the Bible says it satisfies my mouth with good things. In 2024, good things will come to you. I know that what is trending is that you should hustle, you should go after things. It's good to release your faith. But there's a dimension. Noah did not chase after animals. They came to him. Good, they come to you. Job 22, verse 25, he said, he said, he said you, when you repent, good will come to you. That's what he says. I pray in the name of Jesus, God will satisfy your mouth with good things. And every single day, your youth will be renewed like that of an eagle. How do you make this happen? Is what we want to talk about this morning. Because it's not what God will do. God does, is in the business of doing it. As a believer, if you're born again, what you need to do is to know who you are. At home training on Friday, I asked people, I passed the microphone to people, what happened to you when you were born again? Oh, somebody said it felt great. Somebody said, what happened to you when you were born again? What happened to you? Simple. Let me just simply put, eternal life came into you. Eternal life doesn't mean everlasting life like you are going to live forever. If you go to heaven, you'll be there forever. If you go to hell, you'll be there forever. The Bible says worms don't die there. Eternal life, I know Zoe. It means God's kind of life. What God depends on that makes him God. The Bible says if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwells within you, he will revitalize your mother. The first Adam is just natural. But the last Adam, Jesus, is a life-giving spirit. So for God to renew is not a big deal. You remember when Jesus showed up at the tomb of Lazarus? And Martha was crying, oh, master, if you had come, he wouldn't have died. Jesus said, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. He said, yes, I know that he will rise up on the last day. He said, no, 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 no. God is not afraid of death because he's resurrection and life. He's not afraid of degeneration or anything going down because he can raise things up. Oh, I had that revelation. It's a rhema word. The God that raised Lazarus that was dead for this. What can he not raise? I believe that, that lady's kidney came back to life. Therefore, I command in the name of Jesus. Don't joke with my declarations. My mouth has been touched with the coals from his altar. I command every tree that my father has not planted be uprooted in you. Anything the enemy has stolen, let it be restored sevenfold. If you believe it, shout him in three times, somebody. How you enter that dimension as a believer, is what we want to learn this morning in a short time. In Revelations 1.6, 
Revelation 1.6. The Bible says Jesus has made us kings and priests to his God and Father and to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Now, it's not something we begged him to do. It's not something he's going to do. It's something he has done. He has made us kings and priests. What did Saul do? Saul was a king. And when Samuel the priest didn't come on time, he entered the office of a priest and God said, I'm done with you. What Saul wanted, God gave you on the plot of gold. You didn't even ask for it. He made you kings and priests. First Peter 2.9 For you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, peculiar, periboisis is the, is the Greek word, you are peculiar. Your type has not existed in the dealings of God with humanity. If a man is in Christ, a new species, a, is a new type, is a new kind of human being. That you are a king and you are a priest at the same time. Now, that sounds simple, but the moment you embrace that as a Christian, everything changes for you. Your health will improve. Your wealth will be on another level. When I read what some people see on the internet, I just laugh. There's some things that shouldn't even come near you. How can God send you to do something and you're looking for money? How? How? Does it mean God is broke? Or he wants you to be begging? How can God? I'm not talking about what you ordered for. God sent you. And you lack. How? Something is wrong somewhere. Because it's giving you all things. 1 Corinthians 3.21 All things are yours. Therefore let no one boast in men for all things are yours. All things are yours. In Revelation 5 verse 10 Let me move fast because I have a lot to say. Revelation 5 The Bible says and have made us kings and priests to our God. This way I'm going. And we shall just survive on earth. You know, because a lot of people think, oh, yeah, 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 we are kings in heaven. When we get to heaven, we are. No. We are, he's made us kings and priests. And I'm building an argument. Please follow me. And we shall reign on the earth. My God. The last time you looked for house rent is the last time it will happen to you. You will take money out of money. <laughs> Somebody is not even saying amen because he's thinking, how will it happen? <laughs> Mary said, how shall these things be? Seeing that I have no man. Maybe you are thinking on your seat, I don't know anybody. You know, Nigeria is for people that know people. I don't have people that have long leg. God sits in heaven. The earth is his footstool. How long? Is that leg? <laughs> I pray in the name of Jesus. You will not know lack again. In the name of Jesus. I command sicknesses to die inside you. In the name of Jesus. Listen to me. I'm not just praying for you. I'm praying with revelation. No two kings can dwell in the same palace. Because your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Sicknesses cannot dwell there. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, any symptom anywhere, any clinical prophecy, we tear it into pieces. In the name of Jesus, you are leaving this place more than conqueror. And we shall reign where? On the earth. Hmm. This is not our idea. This is God's idea. And this is not what is going to happen when we fast and pray. This is what he has made us. This is who you are by being born again. There's some families that when you're born into, you are born rich. Come on, talk to me. Do you believe that? There are some families you are born into. Once you are born there, you are rich. Prince Charles does not think like some of us. He was raised not to think like some of us. I won't say all of you because I don't think like 
Some people think. Mm -mm, I don't. I, you can't even convince me. It's too late. That's why I tell you, please meditate on scriptures. Don't just be coming to church. Read scriptures and meditate. You must have a change of mind. I love the testimony I heard about the brother in Lagos church. He said he started listening to the messages and his mindset changed. What happened? The boss, he didn't tell anything. Gave him opportunity to start his business. His friend gave him equipment. You begin to attract things. Goodness begin to follow you. Mercy begin to follow you. Goodness begin to supply your needs. Mercy begin to forgive your sins. Wake up. Religion is not Christianity. You must understand this, that you are a king. That brother seated somewhere. I don't know which campus you are. You don't even have transfer fare. You are a king. We don't believe with our head. We believe with our heart. If you can receive what I'm sharing with you today, your life will change. Yesterday, I went to, uh, went to do something with some people. And uh, one person, you know, that attends schools, uh, was telling me about another brother. I said, that brother came to church, didn't have anything. God started increasing. And he was driving in front of us. He said, that is, that is his new car. You remember that day I said, if you came to church by bus, raise up your hand. If you now have a car, raise up your hand. And like maybe 100 people. When are we going to see your face on the screen? The trials of Job was nine months. Yours is nine years. Yours came from your grandfather to your father. And now you are born again. You want to continue. No, no. Not in this church. Not under this teaching. It's not possible. Yeah, Nigeria is hard. I'm telling you, people that work at, at the American embassy don't even know what is happening. We have an ambassador here. She, she's, she, she, she's from Botswana. She doesn't even... Anything, if dollar goes up, she's happy. <laughs> because they don't pay her in error. Are you following what I'm saying? Mentality must change. You are walking out of this place with the mentality of a king. Oh, that amen is not correct. God made us to be in charge. Genesis 1, 26. I want to read the Amplified Bible. Let, and God said, let us, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, make mankind, not only men, is anthropos, any human being, in our image and after our superscription, and let them have complete authority. Have you seen that before? I flew you in not too long ago, and I was just imagining, I told my wife, the first person that flew you here, plane, what, 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 is, what was they thinking about? To fly in the air. The first person. I told her, my, my grandfather was 96 years old. Do you know what 96 is? Before he passed. He never saw America. Never saw England. All his life. I'm not talking him now. He's a great man. But somebody thought there's a world somewhere I have complete authority. I can subdue. And he subdued every law. And you are struggling for transport fear. And you carry God within you. It's not possible. After this service, there's a funeral service that will be held for mediocrity. Stagnation has lost your address. If you believe it, shout amen like fire. Psalm 115 verse 16. Psalm 115 verse 16. The heaven, even the heavens, belong to God. Nobody argues. In fact, all the demons in the astral plane tell them to shut up because the heaven belongs to God. But the earth, he has apodidomi, he has given to the children of men. So I own something here. Somebody told me that, Pastor, I just built a house. Will you come and bless? I said, you are now a landlord. You know what that means? You are a lord in the land. 
<laughs> you are a lord in the land. In that neighborhood where you speak, demons must hear you. Because you are a lord in the land. The earth he has given. You remember the research that was carried out in England that they divided the wealth of the earth amongst the people. Then it was uh, 8 billion people. And they found out that if somebody wasn't greedy, everybody should have 8 million pounds. The question is, where's your own? Where's your own? Where's your own? Christians like pushing everything to God. God, God, God. The choir was singing. Your words come to pass. Your words is this, your words is that. I signal the person singing my word. You are not a co-inheritor. You are a joint here. That's what eternal life has obtained for you. You know what that means? Maybe I'm going to come on the internet for this. But let me tell you. Jesus cannot survive without you. You can't survive without Jesus Christ. That's the meaning of joint here. If you have a joint account, and the mandate says that both of you must sign, can one person sign and withdraw? No. You need the second person. If he travels, you have to wait. Come on, talk to me. That's, That's the meaning. So if you push everything to God and say, God, ah, God will help me. God will do this. Go and see the first miracle of Peter. Peter and John. He said, look at us. Because they have the grace to heal. Jesus told the disciples, he said, go and heal the sick. He didn't say, call God to heal. Because you, you he breathed upon them when they rose from the dead. He said, receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the power. Let me tell you. You carry power. Demons talk about you. The first message I heard from uh, Dr. Miles Moreau before he got close, before he passed, I went to Rajoba, Winner's Chapel. In those days, I didn't have anything. So all those people that used to sell tapes on the road. Later, I told Dr. Miles Moreau in my house. He came to eat in my house. And I told him, how that the first message I heard blessed me, the kingdom of ignorant kings. We have a lot of kings walking on the floor and slaves are riding on the donkeys. Wake up. There are many things I will teach you, but today I want to teach you how to act as a king and how you will renew your strength Our Psalm 103 from verse 1 to 5 will be a reality in your life. If you look at Job 22 verse 28, you will also declare a thing. I love the way the Amplified put it. He said you will decide and declare. You will decide and decree. You know, whatever you permit on earth, heaven has... Okay, if that's what you what, what, what you want, no, no problem. Grandfather didn't have a car. Popsy didn't have a car. You are struggling too. The thing is affecting your child because you don't have school fees, and you are quiet, and you are born again. What is happening? Say no, you know Nigeria is hard. No, is that's the way the enemy wants you to think. Prince Charles doesn't think that way. Your pastor doesn't think that way. In fact, I tell people, remind me that I don't have money in my pocket. I think magnanimously. I think big. I don't do small things. And not because I kept money somewhere. I just believe that God is big. If you could tie the heavens with gold, it tied the floor. Come on, talk to me. I believe that there are some people who don't wear gold, they'll be, they'll be walking like this in heaven. <laughs> because you, 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 come on, talk to me, somebody. There are some religious things you must shake off. 
you will also decide and decree a thing and it shall be established. For God? For you. For you. For you. For you. Business not working and you are quiet. Ha! Huh? How? There are two things you must hate. Poverty and sickness. When you feel symptoms in your body, you say, ah, I walked in the sun yesterday. No, tell that thing to go. Be aggressive. Somebody asks Bishop Oedekbo, when you wake up, what do you do? You say, I attack the devil first. <laughs> Praise God. You remember the story I told you about a bully that wrote the names of people he was going to bully. A little rascal said, ah, hi, bully. What are you doing this morning? He said, well, I'm just writing the names of the people I'm going to bully. He said, can I have a look? His name was number three on the list. He said, hey, my name is... He said, oh, sorry, I didn't know that was you. I'm telling you, if you are quiet... You are expecting God to come down. In fact, the way you pray sometimes, oh God, have mercy on me. Just do something this year. No, believers don't pray that way. In the name of Jesus, I'm getting sweeter and sweeter every day. See, when I was on holiday, my voice ceased from nowhere. My voice ceased from nowhere. When I'm talking, I was like, how are you? How are you? On the, I couldn't talk to people on the phone. I couldn't talk to my mom because you panic. My voice ceased. What will a preacher do if he can't talk? I say, my came on the stairs. I praise the Lord. He say, Pastor, take it easy. So what did I do? Voice, open up. Now, when doctors check it, they will give you explanation. Oh, your cortisol, your this one is too high. I said, voice, hear the word of the Lord. Open up. First day, he opened up. Second day, he opened up. I kept saying it. And I did not doubt. I knew that when I come to Abuja, I will preach. I was talking to one of my mentors. And he said, ah, your voice is clearer today. I said, yes, sir. <laughs> when I was singing, before I started preaching, I remembered that just last week, my voice did not come out. I couldn't sing. But what will somebody do? Uh, I, can't, I can't talk. Uh, hey, they'll be complaining. They will do this. They will go to the hospital. They will give it a name. Before you happen, hey, cancer of the truth. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Now I command in the name of Jesus. Everything that is not of God in you, let it die. Listen to me, I'm not just, pre I'm, I'm talking to you from, see, I am somebody that has been, I've been to, I've been to, I, I can't, I don't even know how to describe it. I'm not teaching you what I've not practiced. I'm teaching you what I've lived by, what I've seen result with. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, anything within you that is challenging your status quo or your status as a child of God, let it die right now. If you believe it, shout amen three times. Allow me to pray African prayer. Any arrow fire at you will go back to the sender. Isaiah 49, 26 says, I will contend with those who contend with you. If they don't see contention, they will see it from this moment. If you believe it, shout amen, somebody. <laughs> Sit down, I have a lot to say. Most important thing you need to learn as a king is that kings must learn how to think. There's a way kings think. A king wanted to give a slave a gift, he did something very good. And the gift was big. And the subjects told him, his chieftains told him, Sir, uh, oh, oh, live long, O oh king. Remember, remember that the person you want to honor is the slave. 
The king said, I'm not honoring him because of who he is or what he did. I'm honoring him because of who I am. I don't do small things. You remember the story I told you about Tiger Woods going to an Arab king to play golf. Oh, the king was so glad to have him. And asked him when he was going. I mean, he stayed in their house, good food. They took him around, nice animals around, and he played on a golf course he's never seen before. And he told him, um, what do you want? We want to give you a gift before you go. Uh, Taigo said, I'm already blessed. I like what I, I enjoyed myself. No, no, no. The, the king said, no, let me just bless you. And Tiger Woods just said, I want a club, meaning I want the equipment to play golf. The king thought it was a club he wanted. First week, second week, third week, fourth week, he didn't hear from the king. He said, ah, but it was this king that asked me what I wanted. The fifth week, he went to the mill and saw that he had to go somewhere. The king bought him a full club, 18 holes. It was like, what? If a, an earthly king, he said, you, being evil, you know how to give good gifts. I'm much your heavenly father. Come on, talk to me. A lot of us learned about God the wrong way. And we have the wrong picture of God. As a king, there's a way you must think. Tiger Wood was thinking like an American. The king was thinking like a king. You want a club? You couldn't tell the king you wanted just uh, an equipment to play golf. That's all you want? With what I can do for you. You must think about what I call your born right. The way you are born and the privileges you have. Galatians 4 and verse 1. Galatians 4 and verse 1. Now I say that the heir, as long as he's a child, if he doesn't know how to talk, if he doesn't know how to think, as long, now the child determines how long. As long as he's a child, it does not differ at all from unbelievers. Your cousins are not saved. The challenges they have, you have it. The things that happen in your family, when the things they go through, you will go through it if you are a child. You don't differ at all. Apart from going to church, the transport fare you wait, you waste. And the few you're born to come to church, there's nothing different. Maybe I should face this, face this side because they're not getting me there. Although he's master of all. I love the way the Amplified puts it. Give it to me in the Amplified. Now, what I mean is that as long as an inheritor, the heir, is a child or underaged, and you know we're not talking about physical age, he does not differ from a slave, although he's the master of all the estate. That's what I wanted to show you. Legally, you are the head and not the tail. You know, sometimes when they say some things in church, you know, just be deceiving us. In fact, what is trending in Nigeria now is that white people came to deceive us. We had a religion before, we, before they came. And some of you are embracing that. Some of you are embracing that. That the Bible is a lie. How? 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 In fact, when you talk for five minutes, I know who is talking through you. When the Holy Writ was breathing to people. <sighs> Bible says they were, those who wrote, they were moved by the Holy Ghost. How? The fact that your forefathers had a religion, does it mean that they got it right? Elihu, the friend of Job said, I, I thought age was wisdom until I realized. When somebody that was old opened his mouth, I thought age was wisdom. And I'm not talking down on our forefathers, but I'm telling you they didn't get everything right. 
there are women that gave birth to 14 children. All of them died. They went to the stream to cry. That was where one demon appeared and they received witchcraft. Does it mean that's right? I'm telling you, it was hard to survive in Africa because the, the dark places of the heart, they are the habitations of evil. I don't have time to describe some things to you. How revival broke up in Africa. You know the story of how Apostle Ayo Babalola went to a certain village for revival and the king wanted to punish him. He said, oh, that's the only bush you can give to you. There was a serpent that lived there that was terrorizing the people. It was a bush nobody could go to. And when the king said they could go there, he, he marched with his people there. When the snake saw them, the big python, he ran away first. They killed the big python. Right now, there's a CAC in that place. They subdued those things. They are saying, our forefathers had a religion. Some of you, you mo- they are demonically sponsored things that are limiting your being born again. Coming to church is not all there is. I pray in the name of Jesus. As you leave this church, there will be a rema word in your spirit. You will grow up. Everything the enemy is doing in your life that God is not doing is over. In the name of Jesus. Now in Ecclesiastes 8, chapter 4, chapter 8, verse 4, I need to run. Where the word of a king is, there is power. Please note this. The Bible does not say where the king is. Where the word. I sincerely need to move away from this people to this people. <laughs> it, the Bible doesn't say where the king is. Where the word. Psalm 32 verse 3. He said, when I kept quiet, my bones grew old within me. When I kept quiet when I was quiet, when I was silent. You're just like a captain that the ship is going left and it's supposed to go right. He said, "Eh, eh, this ship is going left. What do you do? You turn the rod. And your tongue is a rod. How will your strength be renewed? Your tongue. Oh, I was showing you Job 22, 28. Quickly, quickly go there. Job 22, verse 28. Quickly. Job 22, verse 28. Hallelujah. He said, you shall decree a thing and it will be established for you. That is the way your light, light will shine on your way. How Proverbs 418 will be a reality is through your mouth. You shall decree a thing. It should be established for you. Now, there is a grammatical Signal there. Telling you what I mean is that that is the way light will shine on your ways. That is the way you will never see darkness when you declare a thing. Oh, Pastor Beardo, I confess God's word. He doesn't come to pass and I'm discouraged. Mark 11, verse 22. Mark 11, 22. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. Have faith in God. So when the doctor tells you, this thing is going to be your life for life. Walk out of that place and have faith in God. I love what Bishop Wade, my wife shared with me what Bishop Wade said in one of his messages. He said he prayed for a woman. And before he prayed for the woman, the woman was sick, the woman was down. And it was just a short prayer. And said to the woman, this thing we're about to pray about, you had it before. Maybe an organ packed up. You had it before. Somebody stole it. But it doesn't matter if he stole it. If he doesn't want to restore it. The person who put it there has more. Every manufacturer has a spare part. That was, that was a rhema word for that woman. And the bishop just laid hands on her and said, receive it. That was it. 
The problem with some of us that we sit on, sit on social media, we don't even know the word. We don't even believe the word anymore. Because the preoccupation of the enemy is to make sure you don't believe the word. Have faith in God. Of course, I know that the Greek says, have God kind of faith. Because God saw darkness in the beginning. And I thought he introduced light and said, light be. No, the Bible says God that caught light out of darkness. He called it out. Out of poverty. You say, my case will be different in this family. I'm a Christian. You know the grace of God. How that Jesus became poor. That for your sake, that through his poverty, you will become very rich. Uh, when they're reading inheritance in my family, will you be excited? Your name is not there. So you don't expect to hear good news from those who are talking on the internet. Blessed is the man that does not listen to the counsel. Counsel means advice of the ungodly. That is where blessing starts. He does not listen to the advice of the ungodly. That's this struggling. Should I tight? Should I not tight? At your level with how good God has been to you. I pity you. Ask your neighbor, say, who did this to you? You have my permission, ask your neighbor. <laughs> uh, kings don't hug you. Go to Oba or Bini and say, I will destroy the city. He will just be looking at you. <laughs> kings don't hug you. When you get somewhere, you have a friend, you'll be arguing scriptures. You'll be arguing king's decree. They don't argue. Kings don't complain. Kings issue commands. I pray in the name of Jesus. What God has made you to be in charge, you shall be in charge. In Psalm 18 verse 44, the Bible says that soon as they hear of me, they will be me. The foreigners will submit to me. Not to God, to me. Oh, come on, talk to me somebody. Next verse. The Bible says in the next verse, the foreigners will fade away and come frightened from their hideouts. Because I spoke. As soon as they hear from me. Say to some people, don't be silent. You can't be silent. You can't. You can't. Now, I told you to turn to Mark eleven twenty two. 22. Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. Verse 23. Watch this. For as shortly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain. Now, you know what happened? Jesus Christ spoke to a tree. Now, a living tree can die. A living thing can die. But a mountain that is a non-living thing. Jesus says they have ears. This mountain means he was pointing to a mountain. Remember, as the mountain surrounds Jerusalem. So there were mountains around. Come on, talk to me. I don't know why you're quiet today. I don't like a quiet church. Whoever says to this mountain, he was talking about a literal mountain. Be removed. And be cast into sea. Watch this. And does not doubt. Not in front of people in his heart. But believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. So Pastor Biodio, I've been speaking, I've been, you are doubting. One guy said to Jesus, I believe. Help my own belief. <laughs> There's a confession with which you convince yourself. But that's not faith. 2 Corinthians 4.13 says, we believe, therefore we speak. We believe. Now, faith, Paul was talking about faith in the Old Testament and faith in the New Testament. He said, since we have the same spirit, this spirit is not evil spirit, 
This spirit is not Holy Spirit. This spirit is attitude. Faith has an attitude. We believe. I believe, sorry. Therefore, I spoke. We also in the New Testament, we believe, therefore we speak. Now, in Habakkuk 2.4, the Bible says that Joshua shall live by his faith. But in the New Testament, we don't live by our faith. The Joshua shall live by faith. They remove his. If you look at the first miracle of Peter and John, are you, are you, are you, are you still here? Yeah. Peter said, why do you look at us like we are special beings? It is through faith in his name that we raise this man. So in the New Testament, we put faith in what Christ has done, not in ourselves. And if I have time, I will tell you, I will quickly tell you four things you need to do. Now, if you go back to that Mark eleven twenty three, 23, anybody can rejoice when they see the blood walk. I say, hey, I have a testimony. But Bible doesn't say that. Bible says, if you don't doubt what you say, when the blood work is worse. Have you put water in a oil that is hot? The oil will react. Some of the things you see that makes you stop, they are reactions. Strike a snake once, it will react. What do you do? You look for the head and strike again. But you stop, you stop talking. Look at verse 24. Come on, talk to me. Verse 24. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask, you know that the word ask is I tell. It means to demand. When you pray, what do you mean by ask and pray? There are two different things. Because the word pray is prosuke. From where we have the word prostrate. So he's talking about worship. In the place of worship, whatever you demand. Sometimes you're worshiping and God just tells you, declare this. And you say, in the name of Jesus, in the next six months. <laughs> you know, because in the place of prosuke, you are demanding. I tell you. Believe, SMI, that's the Greek word. That you receive lambano, that's the word, lambano. Believe that you're lambano. When I went to my village for the first time and I met my cousins, they took me to the farm. I was excited. These guys, when they put their hand, they, when they see a hole in the farm, they could tell whether that hole was dug by a snake or by a rat or something. So they will put their hand in the hole and lambano the thing, even though we don't see it. Come on, talk to me. If you can say in the name of Jesus, next year, September, I'm going to walk down the aisle. I'm beginning to walk towards it. I'm going to talk about a few things. I will just steal sometimes and talk about a few things. Bible says, believe you receive them. Then you will have what you believe, you received. Not what you prayed about. What you believed, you received. Come on, talk to me. So suddenly when you say, in the name of Jesus. You remember the story of that lady that had hepatitis. <laughs> that was watching our broadcast and got healed. As I'm speaking right now, healing is occurring. Everywhere, all the campuses. As you release your faith, healing is occurring. You will get home and don't see the symptom again. Come on, can you start shout a believing amen, somebody? When you tell that liver, in the name of Jesus, I command appetites to die. You lost my address. The next day, you can feel the symptom again. You mean to, because you believed you received. Maybe after two weeks, I don't know. Suddenly. And your doctors are like, what did you do? Sometimes you don't know what you did. But I'm telling you, tell them. 
I spoke. I believe, therefore, I speak. Because you have them. Now, this is not Apostle Paul that said it is Jesus that Satan came to him and found nothing by guiling him. So your circumstance cannot be the first to defile the scripture. I love Kenneth Hagin of Blessed Memory. He said, I can, I can heal anybody. It will just take time. <laughs> that is powerful. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, anything that is not of God in your life is cursed. You will stand out in your family. In the name of Jesus. Do you know that when Jesus spoke against the tree, the tree was standing and he walked away. The next day, when he was coming, ah, Peter said, ah, the tree, you. Jesus said, uh -huh. what's the big deal? Because Thomas had pinched Peter. Okay, okay. Talking to a tree. <laughs> yes, he said this from heaven. It's not from here. You know, when you come from heaven, this place, your brain can shift. <laughs> Until people start thinking you're a fanatic. You've not started. When you speak to your car, I say you shall be replaced this year. When you speak to your cash book, your checkbook. Pastor Beardon, please, I've been enjoying you. Don't go that route. I am deliberately going there. I am telling you, it works. I said it works. In the name of Jesus. You get to your place of work tomorrow. Lock the door. I say in the name of Jesus. Now let this come and begin to blossom. The years of dryness, the season of dryness, I command. Because I have complete authority. Dryness is over. Let the rain begin to fall. The Lord that made a way in the middle of the sea will make a way for us. That's the way to pray. That's how to talk. That's how to renew your strength. So shall light shine on your way. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Can somebody shout hallelujah? I'm going to continue on Tuesday. I'm out of time. But let me tell you this. When Jesus Christ raised Jehari's daughter from the dead, when he got there, the mourners that were crying, when he said, no, this child is sleeping. Let us wake, him. Let us wake her up. They started laughing. Ah, what kind of crazy person is this? You know the story how that Jairus' daughter was raised from the dead. But Jesus said one thing. He said, give her food that she may have strength. Raise that supernaturally. Maintain the healing naturally. Some of you, you need to learn some things. Some of you don't know you don't have good attitude. Just confessing, Jesus, open doors for me. You are the one closing the doors. You are using your mouth to, with bad attitude. Some of you don't have integrity. And I'm not saying this to talk anybody down. You borrow money that you know you don't pay. And you promise. Before they close the service, hey, you are out. Somebody called me here and said, ah, Pastor Peter, the way people serve God here, ah, I'm touched. How can people be serving God and they'll be broke? I knew where I was going. You see, God, the word God means good. If God eh, refuses to sort somebody out and you want to sort them out by force, you will learn. So this guy wanted to give everybody money. Maybe like 10 million each. He's a billionaire. He's a attendance church. So he said, Pastor Biano, choose people. I said, no, no. Use your own hand to choose people. <laughs> because I knew. So he chose people. And he gave them jobs. Just to test them first. Those people, the way they handled it. The way they... Uh, he came back and said, Pastor Biano. Uh, uh, 
Let's do training for people. I said, uh, <laughs> it's inside the people. All they know is to blame governments, to blame this. You see, people, people, people riot and they said they embezzled money and they are blaming government. Come on, talk to me. It's quiet in this Pentecostal church. Change must start from you. You must develop yourself. Are you following what I'm saying? Are you following what I'm saying? Some things are happening to me right now that didn't happen 10 years ago. I'm telling you. I'm talking about financially, everything Lee. The question I want to leave you with before you leave here today, today is what can I do? What problem can I solve? You see, your uncle is saying, oh, Kosovo, we don't have money. But he pays his dry cleaner. He pays his driver. He pays. What can I do? Do I just want to live my life like this? I said, I want to have my time. What time? At what age? Under 30. You are broke. You are at home. Say, I'm doing a remote job. Every day you are begging for money. Wake up. This is the prime time of your life. This is the prime time of your life. This is the time where you, 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 can, you can juggle three, three things together. Yesterday, my son and I carried something very heavy. After we, fin- we carried it upstairs, I was, I was panting. It didn't pant. I thought about it. I'm becoming old. <laughs> this is the prime time of your life. This is the time you have enough energy to juggle things. I used to go to Lagos every week. 2000, year 2000, year 2001, year 2002, year 2000. Every week to attend midweek service in Lagos because I won't let a lorry close me. Every week by road. And I didn't feel anything. I will land in Lagos and attend service. Talk all night to my friend. I said, ha, what can we do? All these things we are seeing, we talked about it. You can't live your life like that. Any religion that says, oh, everything will be, will, will be God's responsibility is not Christianity. God has a role. You have a role. Your strength is renewed already. So go and scale new heights. Go and do new things. In the name of Jesus. Drive what you never driven before. Live where you never lived before. Fly what you've never flown before. May God take you to heights. Let him take you to the place of heavy. Walk in strange wisdom. Know what to do. Thank you, Father. Now, all these things we shared is a family thing. If you don't belong to the family of Jesus, you can operate. Oh, I'm doing well. The enemy is just feeding you for the day is going to kill you. I had a vision when we just started Koza. Maybe year 2000. I'm sure. I saw somebody crying over the fence. And I, I was praying in tongues. I said, God, supply his needs. And God said, tell him to cross over. Because if you give him anything, they will collect it from him. So I want to say to you today, I don't know who you are. We don't shut our eyes in this church. We say, receive Jesus Christ. Everybody bad. It's a good thing to do. Everybody did it here. So nobody will make fun of you, except those who have not done it. And our lives have changed. Maybe you received Jesus Christ, you went back. Maybe you're not here, you're in one campus watching me right now. Jesus is calling you. The way you feel right now, I'm telling you, not everybody feels that way. It's knocking right now. If you yield to him, there will be a time of refreshing. Today will be the first day of the rest of your life. In the name of Jesus. See after me, everybody. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. That's not everybody. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. I heard your word, but I believe your word. I confess Jesus 
as my Lord and as my Savior. I believe he came in the flesh. I believe he died on the cross. I believe down the third day he was raised from the dead. Therefore, everything he did by death, burial, resurrection, even ascension, I receive into my human spirit. I receive the gift of eternal life. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' precious name. Give the Lord a mighty, mighty hand. I pray that as you go, God goes with you. He's your shama. He perfects all that concerns you. Everything you lay your hands on will prosper. Your experiences will be different. I know that when Jesus died and arose, the blessing was activated in your life. But everything you've done to shut down, everything the enemy has done to shut down the dimension you're, you're supposed to walk in, in the name of Jesus, I command that development to be arrested. Amen. Your testimonies will make news in this city. Amen. You will do it in your usual. Amen. You will see the invisible. This week you will hear the inaudible. Amen. You will talk the intangible. Amen. You will scale new heights. Amen. May you go and come back with testimonies. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Say to your neighbor, say surely. His goodness and his mercy runs after you. All the days of your world, you will live. You will dwell. You will tarry in God's presence forever and ever and ever. Amen. God bless you. See you on Tuesday.